all day. Honestly, that's my favorite part of the job. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Beaumont, the 72nd club founded in the world, which serves to change lives. You've heard me mention our longstanding members and past presidents, Charles Weinbaum Jr. and Charles Locke, whose fathers and grandfathers were also Rotarians. Well, if you look around, you will notice that we are no longer your grandfather's Rotary Club. Now, right? The first woman accepted into membership of the Rotary Club of Beaumont was Margaret Cherb. Thank you, 34 years ago. Margaret served as our club's executive director, or probably secretary, for 30 years, retiring in 1996. The Lord accepted her retirement from active service in 2018 at age 88. Join me in celebrating Margaret Chair. Uh, uh, those on Zoom, we ask you to please mute your microphone. You, Ted, too. Please take a minute to now to check in to, uh, to Rotary on your Facebook page. Leading our invocations today, Nancy Chapman, retired. Pledges, John Bullard, Oregon Bell and Tucker. Introduction of guests, Mandy Clayton, Director of Development and Foundation, Lamar Institute of Technology. Please bow your heads. Dear gracious Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed on us, especially making it possible for us to come together today as a club, either in person or through Zoom. Please look after our members who may be ill or suffering. Please help to guide our leaders in our Rotary, our city, our state, our country, and the world, that they will lead us to a safer and better world. Thank you for today's meal that nourish our bodies and the speaker who nourish our minds and the fellowship we share together. Lastly, I know you have a sense of humor, Lord, so if anybody fell asleep during this prayer, please wake them up because I'm finished. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Tough act. Please join me for our pledges to this great nation in the state of Texas. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, one nation. Good afternoon, Rotarians. I, I want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce any names. Um, and Tim, try to get my good side. Okay. Um, so as I call your name, if you will stand, the Rotarian stand with your guest. Susan Lejeune with, is a guest of Pat Anderson. Mark Adams is a guest of Alan Higgins. Brian Hebert is a guest of Jacques. I'm just going to go with Jacques. <laughs> Ganya, I'm sorry, Jacques. Um, June Dennis is a guest of Liddy Ennis. Carl Tyler, or Pastor Carl Tyler, is a guest of Robert Cocott. Did I say that right? Cocott? Oh, there he is. Um, Dana Simmons is also a guest of, of Robert Cocott. So is Den, uh, Dustin Albanese, Roslyn Tyler's, Lauren, is it Oliver or Olivier? Oliver. Thank you, Robert. I think you won the, the prize for today. 
Bobby Fennell is a guest of Santino Moshe Terry. Okay. Ross Hearn is a guest of Chuck. Is it Heron? Hair. Where are you? And so is Mark Blaylock. Annette Bell is a guest of Craig and Rebecca. Is Rebecca here? Okay. Shelby Quinn is my guest today. And Eric Harrington is a guest of Denise Berry. Thank you guests for joining us today. And if you're interested in joining Rotary, we can make that happen for you. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, yes, Rotarian of the day, past president, Pat Anderson has a word. Pat? Well, today I'm here to talk about taste of some other place. Everybody knows Paul O'Neill, and this is Susan that I brought here. And I'd like for you to remember that Paula lost her. She was going to be here today, but her mother passed away. So keep her in your prayers. But it, I'm sure that how many of y'all have ever been to the tasting of some other place? There you go. How many of you know what it's all about and what it goes to? Yeah. It really does a lot of things for a lot of people and it's a lot of work and we have a lot of people that have volunteered to help there and do different things. Well, this year with what's been taking place with COVID and everything, it's going to be a little bit different and, and I'm not going to try to explain everything to you. I'm going to let Susan, cause she knows more about it, but we want y'all to think about this and what they're doing and, and how they're going to be doing that. And please give it an opportunity to, to support this. So Susan long is going to be up here. She's with takes some other place. And she'll explain exactly what's taking place. And thank you for your time. All right, Susan. It's all yours. Um, as Pat said, I'm here uh, representing the tasting for some other place because Paula's mother did sadly pass away yesterday. So she asked me to stand in for her. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, if you'll look on your on your tables, there's some green flyers that kind of explain everything that's going to happen um we're doing things a little different not only is it virtually which we had to do last year but it's also going to be uh we're going to do things a little different we usually have underwriters which we still do that do a great job in supporting us uh with their funds but we also usually have the the ticket sales which is ten dollar tickets and we usually make a lot of money with that so we don't have those. So we're doing something a little different this year. And we're putting, ha asking people to put these jars out for the uh, awareness week, which is next week, the 15th, Sunday, the 15th to Sunday, the 22nd. And these are your, hopefully you'll see these around in places. And I just so happen to have extras if you would like to take one to put out today. So just see me after if you would. Um, the on the on the flyer there's down at the bottom which paul and i just learned about it, is a quick response and if, if you don't know what it is it's something you can uh turn your fa uh, phone on camera and then put it over that and it'll give you our website which is the the tasting for some other place so we're hoping to um raise the funds needed because this is the only fundraiser for some other place the, uh, we're the only ones that that do this and then give the, all the money to them and it makes about a month's worth of, of services for them and it all goes directly to them so I appreciate your time I appreciate Pat Anderson for having me here and Jackie Chapman for making it happen so thank you all for your time thank you To report on board action, your board secretary, Dana Timaeus. Good afternoon, Rotarians. Your uh, electronically semi-proficient board had an electronic vote yesterday on five new member proposals and advanced those to you. 
They are Shelby Branham, Executive Director, Beaumont Heritage Society, proposed by Deborah Drago Associations, Beaumont Heritage Society. Erica Harris, CEO, Principal Consultant, Harris Consulting, proposed by Teresa Simpson, Business Services-Media and Image Consulting. Brian Shajari, Intelligence Specialist with the United States Coast Guard Reserve, proposed by Ty Kudrain, classified as Coast Guard Reserves Intelligence. Nicholas Ganje, Acting United States Attorney, U.S. Attorney's Office, Eastern District of Texas, proposed by Dana Tomas. U.S. Attorney, Acting U.S. Attorney. M. Shahid Sean Javed, President of Starco Impex, proposed by Dana Tomas. Convenience Stores dash Wholesale Food Distributors. Uh, please remember, uh, with this uh, announcement, you have 10 days to register an objection to a membership proposal if you choose to do so, uh, lest otherwise you should hold your peace forever. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep those membership proposals coming. We're doing a great job, don't you think? What surprises me most is that anyone with intelligence is associating with Ty Kudrin. I don't know. But I want to introduce to you, you've heard about the Board Action, the recipient of the uh, donation for graduate study abroad, Annette Bell. Invite uh, Annette Bell to the podium to say a few words. Annette? Thank you, Mr. Brown. First off, my name is Annette Bell. Hi, everyone. Um, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me, Mr. Brown, uh, Mr. Craig, Ms. Maxwell. She's not here right now, um, but she's with District 5910. Um, and I would not be here without Rotary and without her and without all of you. Um, so thank you so much for having me. Uh, I am going to the University of Edinburgh in Scotland uh, for operations research, data science. And I'm very excited. The focus, my area of focus is disease prevention and treatment. Um, and I'm really looking forward to my studies here there. So thank you so much. Exciting, very exciting. So uh, committee announcements, we want to hear about wind down with Rotary. Sherry Pierce. Oh, y'all, it's happening. October the 7th. If you have not put this on your calendar, do it right now because it's going to happen. We have our sponsorship levels ready and I have good news and I have bad news about our sponsorships. The, um, the bad news is if you wanted the champagne level, the $3,000 level, you're too late. Somebody has, two people have already thank you to the Masons and to JK Chevrolet for sponsoring those. Those get our wine glasses. They get their logo and all that stuff on there. The good news is we got lots of other sponsorships. If you want to sponsor, if you want to spend $5,000, we can find it somewhere in there for you to spend. And we would happily take your money. Um, there is a sheet here, right here, that has the sponsorships on the back. Is sitting back there at the top. I mean, sponsorships is sitting back there on the table. And there's also a handy dandy little um, form if you should find someone that you want to uh, sell a sponsorship to. We'd love to have you. Next week, we will have tickets for sale. They're going to be $40 in advance and $50 at the door. So we will have packets for you to sell. Um, and I think that's, oh, uh, door prize, uh, not door prizes, raffle items. I've had somebody bring me one today and we've already got several other promises. We will do the raffle where you buy the ticket and you drop the, the ticket in the ones that you want, you know, which one you'd like to be drawn for. And that's how that happens. And we've already got two or three things. So if you would like to donate that, and we also need some entertainment. If you know somebody that, you know, a little small little band or something, send them my way. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And to introduce our guest, Josh Smith, General Manager, Bill Clark Pest Control. Josh? Hey, good afternoon, Rotarians. It's my honor today to be able to introduce to you Christy Young. With over 25 years of experience, Christy has an extensive career in nonprofit management, public and government affairs, and community relations in various sectors including the oil and gas industry, uh, healthcare, and higher education. 
She recently joined the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce as Vice President of Economic Development. Following graduate, graduation of Leadership Beaumont, the oldest running leadership program in Texas, Christy took the business plan developed by her group and established Suits for Success, a program that clothed women in need for interview appropriate attire. One of the highlights of Christy's career was establishing a foundation at Baptist Hospitals of Southeast Texas, where she still serves on the board today. A graduate of Texas A&M University, there you go. Uh, she has served on numerous boards and committees, including the Rotary Club of Beaumont, Junior League of Beaumont, Press Club of Southeast Texas, the Beaumont's Children's Museum, just to name a few. Christy has received numerous awards throughout her career from agencies including Pioneering Women, Junior League of Beaumont, and the Beaumont Junior Forum. Christy is an Aggie uh, Women Board Emerita and lives in Beaumont with her husband Rodney and her two boys, Hayden and Bryce. Please help me give a warm welcome to Christy Young. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Well, um, I'm so glad to be here today, but I'm very sorry uh, because I know some of you probably did not see your rotary grams and you were expecting Speaker Phelan. Um, and I, I'm sorry about that. He, he's much funnier than I am. I could listen to him for hours speak. And, um, you know, he's got four boys, so he's got all these great stories. Um, I have two boys who are very smart and funny and witty, but you know, I'm not a great storyteller, but I will, I do have a proud mom moment that I would like to share with you guys. Um, some of you saw this on Facebook yesterday, but my oldest son is Hayden. He is 18 years old. Um, he's a senior at Westbrook and he's involved in Interact. And yesterday he passed his real estate exam. So he is now a licensed realtor working for Carrie Monkla team. So uh, he'll be a high school senior and selling real estate. So super proud of him. He'll be applying to Texas a and in a few days as well. And then I kind of feel bad because this summer when people would ask me about my boys and I always talk about Hayden because, you know, real estate was really exciting. And but Bryce is 13 years old and it's kind of in that age group where it's kind of hard where you're not, you know, you're too young to do some things, too old to do some of the other camps. But he's my computer buff. And so uh, he, he's a gamer and all of that, but he also, he's very fascinated with World War II. And so he has taught himself some German and Russian. So sometimes I'll ask him a question and he'll answer in another language and it'll take, you know, 10 minutes to figure out what he wants for dinner or whatever, because I'm trying to figure out what, you know, he's saying. But uh, if you asked him what he wants to do professionally, he would probably tell you a uh, YouTuber. I'm sure they're probably less, uh, well-off YouTubers and there are professional athletes. But then there's this, this is Paul Daddy. This is Paul Daddy, this is my daddy, their grandfather. And he just launched a YouTube channel. So now he's a YouTuber and um, he is doing barbecue tips, backyard barbecue tips, Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue, that's hog with H-A-W-G. Uh, and his tagline is, I like pig butts, I cannot lie. So anyway, uh, he started that this week, proud daughter moment as well. So if you want some tips, uh, go subscribe to him. Who knew that if you put a zipper in your uh, cover for your grill, it goes in a lot easier. And I know I've fought mine many times. So anyway, proud of my little men in my life. Um, and so a little bit about me, um, I can't believe it, but I've been a member of this Rotary Club for over 20 years now, I believe, because it was before I even had Hayden. and. Through that, those years, I've served in many different roles and positions and um, taken different career paths. But, um, and I think a lot of them have led me to, to where I am now. And of course, I remember fondly the, the foundation at Baptist Hospitals, and then of course, raising major gifts for Lamar University. And in those roles, I saw how important economic development is to a community and how many different things affect that. You know, your school district, your quality of life, these things that you're recruiting these executives to your community and um, you find out what's really important and then fast forward then i got to work at exxon mobil and learn about oil and gas that industry as well as pipelines and all that goes along with that and all that's helping me today in this role but i think the role that probably prepared me the best for what i'm doing now is uh in middle school and high school being a cheerleader because i am a cheerleader for beaumont I am, uh, I was raised in Anahuac, Texas, 
Chambers County girl. Then I went up the road to A&M in College Station and then came to Beaumont 96. So I am Southeast Texas. I've always been a big proponent, big supporter of uh, Beaumont. And I get very offended when people say anything negative, even if it's a little bit true. I don't, I mean, I want everybody to be very positive. So this has been a great uh, experience. I started March 15th. Um, so just under five months in the role, but um, I've got a lot of good news to share with you today, but I do want to look back at some of the um, things that happened during the pandemic that's kind of gotten us to where we are today. Um, the first thing I'll share are the most recent unemployment numbers that we have, uh, and they're from June, and this is from the Texas Workforce Commission in the U.S. Department of Labor. And if you look uh, in June for the Beaumont Port Author Metropolitan uh, st Statistical Area, we're at 14.6%. And that was in 2020. It, 2021, now we're down to 10.5% in that area. And Beaumont is actually at 9.9%, which now we can say we're out of the double digits. Um, but I will tell you right now, there's a lot of funding that's coming through the AmeriCares Act. We've heard about that. It's at the federal level. It's at the state, the county, the city levels. And I know um, I was looking last week at one of the federal grants and when you have a higher unemployment rate like we do in Southeast Texas, we're traditionally usually the second highest unemployment rate in, in Texas. This actually positions us very well to receive some economic recovery dollars. So we'll be pursuing those dollars and hopefully that will help us with some um, economic de uh, development and recovery efforts. And this is a, a, a good positive stat that I wanted to share as well. If you look, this is in June as well, Beaumont Port Arthur area, we were the fourth uh, highest area with the biggest drop in unemployment numbers. So we're gaining the most jobs. We're the fourth uh, metropolitan area ahead of Dallas. So uh, I'm proud of that, that stat and it shows us that you know, people are hiring and they are getting jobs. Um, one of the things that the chamber did at the end of the year our advancing business development committee is they asked the chamber members you know what are some of the top business impacts you're seeing coming out of covid the first big wave you know when we were at the end of last year and of course people would cite you know the pause and expansion projects obviously um you know a lot of businesses felt that and then employees this was still when they were just now getting the vaccinations out um, the extra unemployment benefits that we saw finally expired in June. And by the way, Louisiana still has theirs and we do share a workforce with, of course, the western part of Louisiana. So that still keeps some people, um, you know, home. And, um, and then, of course, the supply chain interruptions. So those were some of the biggest concerns that our businesses had um, coming out of COVID. And then recently, just talking to some of our different industries just trying to see where as they could look back now and some of them you know having the numbers finally getting through the fiscal year and getting things put together you know talking to uh our friend ann scoggin about home sales you know and she's shared some numbers with us and said you know since hurricane harvey really and truly we, nothing's changed we've had low in inventory and high demand and so that's kept our prices um, going up and because of all the expansion projects that we have on the books that are either underway or planned don't see that changing anytime soon and then in healthcare we know last year was such a trying year and, and of course now right now another trying time but um, hospitals missed their budgets by millions of dollars however if they would not have had the stimulus those reimbursements it would have been so much worse off. And so um, that's where they are. And then construction, talking to our friends in construction, one particular business, in 2020 sales were down 20%, I mean, 40%, 40% uh, from 2019 sales. But um, now they're, right at this point, they're about 90% of 2019 sales, so they're recovering. But the number in 2020 is a little bit misleading too because one of the things i don't think a lot of people realize but the petrochemical industry was already slowing down before the lockdown because of the russian saudi arabia oil war so that was having a little bit of impact on the construction businesses they were already seeing some of that kind of trickle um, and, and and slow down a little bit and then after talking to our friends in the the small business development center um 
they assisted 17 new businesses in 2019, but only five in 2020, as you can understand. Um, but they feel like they were they were rebounding because they've helped 10 so far this year. Now they provided the same amount of client assistance last year, obviously, because they were helping a lot of clients with the PPP loans, as well as the economic injury disaster loans. And then right now, 2021, there's a lot of interest in new businesses that want to start, but a lot of that COVID money, or pretty much all of it, is, is gone. And so that makes the funding is a little bit tight right now. Okay, so um, currently right now, uh, kind of fast forward to where, where I am. I started March 15th. Um, and I don't know if y'all remember that week, but that was spring break week. That was when the mass mandates were coming down. And I mean, I started and I have been drinking from a fire hose. I mean, it has been amazing. And talking to other economic development professionals that have been doing this for a lot longer than me report that they have not seen as many leads in just the first few months of the year as they have in the last three and four years combined. Now we get leads through the um, governor's office, the economic development division, and then we also get um, companies that will just call us directly. And currently right now, Beaumont is shortlisted for four projects. Um, now, are they all gonna happen? Probably not, but are some of them gonna happen? Probably so. And um, what that means shortlisted is that uh, we've made it, they you know, visited other cities, They've, you know, compared us and then we're down to one, two or three different cities that they're considering. And so um, it's a very, very exciting time. Um, why do they like Southeast Texas? Well, number one, our trained workforce. Um, we have an excellent reputation about our workforce. So that is very helpful with our, um, our community colleges, LIT, Lamar University, that's always very attractive. And then I think sometimes we, we take for granted the infrastructure that we have right here. Um, I know a lot of us get frustrated when we get stopped by trains, but let me tell you, having rail is a huge plus. Having the port, I-10, the pipelines, I can't tell you, almost, it seems like almost every pipeline runs to and ends in Nederland, Texas. I mean, we have a lot of pipelines running through here. We've got the regional airport, and then we're 90 miles away from an international airport. So that's very attractive. And then also um, the low cost of doing business in Texas, uh, and especially in Southeast Texas, is, is very attractive to companies. Okay, so um, this is a very exciting news. You, you probably heard the number $54 billion worth of projects pre-COVID. Um, currently, we're trying to get our heads wrapped around the new number. A lot of projects we know stalled or paused, um, but have come back online. A lot of them um, are mobilizing now. Some have already started. A lot of people, January is kind of a magic date for a lot of folks who will really start mobilizing. But right now on the books, we have over $60 billion worth of projects that are planned or currently underway in Southeast Texas. And that includes a little bit of Louisiana, like Charles, just because uh, of some of the bigger projects that, like I said, we share that workforce. But that's 65,000 jobs. Now that's over 10 to 12 years. So that doesn't mean 65,000 people because a lot of these people will work maybe five different projects or so. Um, so this is one of the things, even if that number is just, you know, a portion of that number that that keeps me up at night. And I know recently um, Travis Woods presented to the Board of Realtors to let them know, you know, we've got to start thinking outside of the box in, in all of these jobs. People are getting places to stay, to live, um, you know, to eat, dry cleaners. I mean, so you may think that this is just related to industry. But think outside the box because there's things that your businesses may can benefit from this, this planned work that is in our area. So one of the things I'm excited about, and you might have heard us mention this before, in fact, last November, the chamber had a, a speaker come in from Houston, the Greater Houston Partnership, to talk about talent pipeline management. And this is a program at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And basically how this is different from other workforce initiatives is that it's employer led and so what happens so many times and even you know currently in southeast texas we have our committees and we have our workforce training providers at the table we have our educational partners at the table and you'll have an employer in and out ever so often 
But what you do with the talent pipeline management or TPM for short is you bring employers together around maybe it's the common industry or maybe it's a common need like customer service. So for example, with us having the big uh, industrial uh, expansion, we would try to bring our industrial partners together. And in that meeting, it's just employers. And so then they feel a little bit freer to talk and you're only sharing aggregated data. And um, this way, you have to get everybody on the same page because we, probably a lot of you have seen, there are so many different job titles across different companies that really are the same positions, but it, it looks like there's all kinds of different jobs when really they're the same skill sets that are needed. And so when we can really wrap our minds around what the needs are in the immediate short term, and then also you start looking, you know, a year, two years, five years down the road. We get great data from the state, from the Texas Workforce Commission and in other places, but sometimes that's a little dated and it's looking backwards. This will allow us to have more real-time data. We will then, after the employers get on the same page, then they bring in the, the educational partners, they bring in the uh, workforce training providers and they say these are our needs so that way it can make us a little bit more nimble we can be we can react and we can stay having that premier uh trained workforce that makes us so attractive because everywhere people are hurting for workers i mean across the country it's everywhere but we need to make sure that we can stay in the forefront of that and i'll tell you i know bisd with their uh career and tech technical education program, their CTE program, they're doing a fabulous job. They're starting at the elementary level and they're going in and talking to them about a host of careers. Um, you know, one of the things I think that our schools are doing a better job of is they're talking about, yes, there's, you know, college is an option, but there's also certifications. There's the technical degrees. They're talking about all the different options and you don't have to stop. You can choose to start out at certification and then move into a two-year community college and then go to your four-year institution and then continue your education. It's about the lifelong learning and so we're trying to educate people about that. And I know with the ISD they have a coordinator now that's working that their job is to interact with business and industry to help um facilitate those needs and help to be a little bit more nimble so we're excited about the talent pipeline program um, and it's kind of like a leadership beaumont program where we've got 50 60 different folks that are participating and then you break out into smaller groups and so my group is the yellow group and they put us together basically according to region so i'm in a group with about four people from san antonio fort bend county me and then somebody from dc and I thought for sure when we got together and we were talking about what area, what city would we focus on, it would be San Antonio. But they already knew what was going on in Beaumont. And when they heard the latest numbers, they were like, okay, we want to we want to focus on Beaumont. So that means we're working on a, all the information, the data now. So when when I graduate in October, we'll have this, this whole effort ready to go. And so um, we're very excited about that. Um, and I just wanted to mention a few other initiatives that, that we're working on too. Um, this first one is called Make My Move. And that is a program that was developed by the folks that um, developed Angie's List. And now it's called Angie. You may be, may be familiar with that. But what it is, is a, a platform for attracting remote workers. Uh, post pandemic, they feel like we'll still have about 25 million people working from home. And typically, those folks can choose where they want to live. And so this is a, a website where people go, they can learn about different cities and the different amenities that we have to offer. And so um, we are working on putting together an incentive package and trying to attract uh, remote workers to come to Beaumont. And um, because we do feel like we have a lot to offer. And along with that, we're uh, beginning a concierge program. And that is where people that are moving or, or interested in Beaumont can go to the chamber website and they'll be able to fill out a form. And then we'll pair them up with one of our committee members who can help them integrate into our community, whether it's finding you know, a school, whether it's finding a physician, um, a house, whatever the case may be, they'll have somebody kind of help them and answer those questions that they may have. And then of course that'll fit hand in hand with the Make My Move program as well. And then uh, we just finished up our first Beaumont Champion session, and that is a program that came out of Leadership Beaumont. 
And basically what we did is we took people from the community. There was a little over 30 folks that participated. Some were veterans of Beaumont, Paula Bothay, all the way to some newcomers to Beaumont. And we took them um, over five weeks, one night a week, just learning about Beaumont. And I will tell you, I mean, I, since, you know, I'm from this area and I learned so much in this program. And the whole point of this program is to empower people with knowledge because so much negativity is said on social media. We know it gets out of hand. But if you have the correct information, then a lot of times if you just share that, it quiets people down. Sometimes they're just, they don't know the truth. And so this program is trying to arm people with the correct knowledge and, and let them know. And so many people were like, I had no idea we had all of this in our backyard. And so that's a fabulous program. I think we'll be doing again after the first of the year. And so I encourage you to sign up, have employees sign up, whether, like I said, whether you've been here a long time or whether you're near to the area. And then another thing that we started was a quarter, quarterly educational program. And our first one was a lunch and learn where we talked about branding. Um, we're gonna do another one uh, in the fall that will talk about uh, government grant writing and funding for nonprofits and for businesses. And so, um, you know, after the chamber pulled our members and you said, what are your greatest needs in education wise? And this is where some of the things that they came up with. And so we'll be doing these quarterly. And so I just want to remind everybody that uh, economic development is a team sport. We are all involved in this, whether you realize it or not. Even if you just go around and take pictures of sunsets, you know, in Beaumont, Texas, and post them on your Instagram, you're promoting Beaumont. So share the good things that are going on in your organizations, your businesses, all that helps make us more attractive to folks and, and make them consider Beaumont. So um, with that, I'll close. And I don't know if anybody has any questions that they have, Jackie. Thank you, Christy. Thank you for your work you do in uh, supporting our economic development. Yes, uh, we do have time for questions. And uh, Christy, I'll be glad to be moderator for that. Oh, and if anyone is concerned that I insulted Ty Kudrain, Hi, we good? Okay. <laughs> Any questions for Christy? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Christy, I'll do my best. Did you hear any of that? Nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll do my best. The comment is made that when you hear negative things about Beaumont, it's likely from this uh, Rotarian's uh, perspective that it comes from some of us who have been here a while. What you might find if you poll newer residents of Beaumont, that the um, impression is much more positive. You know, I just had a conversation uh, within the hour with Alan Higgins. He gives me that idea. He thinks he's thinking about a place to retire at some point and no, no time soon. Yes, Beaumont is home to them uh, and they're relatively new to Beaumont. Thank you, Alan, for that comment. Uh, what do you, what's your response, Christy? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I will tell you my favorite people to talk to are Beaumont transplants. And because you're exactly right, they have a fresh perspective and it makes me feel guilty that we take so much for granted here. Um, I was just talking to someone earlier this week and they said, you know, we moved here. We thought we would be going to Houston, you know, on the weekends for cultural activities. We had no idea how great the symphony was, how great, you know, the Julie Rogers theater and all these wonderful places that Beaumont has. And you are exactly right. We are our own worst enemy. And to see it through these other people's eyes, it just is very refreshing. So I, 100% agree. And that's one of the things I've been doing is asking people that have, um, are fairly new is to get quotes and things from them to share because they're the most enthusiastic and also help us see what we're missing. That's right here in the backyard. So I completely agree. 
Thank you, Christy. Thank you for that question and comment. Any others? Larry, do you have a question? Yeah, anybody on Zoom with a question, please unmute and ask. Well, Christy, thank you for being here. Thank you for what you're doing to promote economic development in Beaumont and Jefferson County. Um, and uh, you know our gifts to the Rotary Foundation. We support seven areas of focus, one of which is economic and community development. Christy, for you speaking with us today, we are making a contribution to the Rotary Foundation in your name toward that effort as a thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. So now looking ahead, uh, next week's speaker will be the Rotary District 5910 Governor Jerry Sp Springfield. So we had this, we should have had the speaker today. We'll have the governor next week. Remember, Wind Down with Rotary Committee is meeting next Wednesday, August 18th, and we hope to have tickets to distribute next week. And you've heard it here, become a sponsor if you're able to. Thank you to our guests for being here today. Brian Hebert, I'm glad to see you. Uh, you have a member proposal right in front of you. Thank you to Rotarians who remember our theme of the year, everyone bring one. Thank you, Robert Cocott for one, two, five, for taking this pretty darn seriously. Thank you for taking the challenge. And those who propose a new member will become a member of the President's Club. I know you wanna be because at the We'll have an end of year celebration, dinner celebration for you and your guest on me. So propose a new member, have dinner on me in celebration at the end of the year. I promise it's going to be a grand time. Please stand and say with me the four way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, second, third, and four, have a good week and serve to change lives.